Time now for Sid Sixero. This is where I got 60 seconds to talk with my face. Thank you. Remember the good old days with the Toronto Raptors? I do. 2019 to be exact. What a team. Went to the finals. What a championship. And the guts of that team. What a parade. Seven hours. Who's counting? The guts of that team, not hard to spot. Number seven in your programs, Kyle Lowry. Number two, not that interested in the photo here, Kawhi Leonard. Last year of his contract. And, of course, number 23, Fred Van Vliet, who came alive in that postseason. They, along with a few others, won an NBA title. Then Kawhi Leonard left as a free agent to sign with the Clippers, who, of course, are the Clippers and don't win. He's failed to get back to an NBA Finals in the three seasons since. And now, according to Kevin O'Connor of The Ringer, he wants to get the band back together. Apparently, Clippers want to add both Lowry from the Heat and Van Vliet from the Raptors before the February 9th trade deadline. Kawhi wants the good old days to return. <laughs> Joseph Cacharo from The Score joining us. You know what, uh, Cash, it's almost like the Raptors had a really good team and he should have stayed there. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, it would have been all right for both his uh, professional success and the success that Toronto Raptors had he stayed. I mean, I don't know if he would have liked this Texas low coming into Toronto in January. Hey, oh, current weather just, story from Cash. You know, there you go. Keep it, keep it relevant and cover all the bases. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the Clippers have kind of been uh, funnily chasing that 2019 Raptors success for a while now. They, they brought in Serge Ibaka. They've got Norm Powell now. And yeah, they're reportedly trying to get one of Kyle Lowry or Fred Van Vliet because they need competent guard play if they want to win a championship, which the franchise has never done. You know, listen, Lowry in Miami, it's, it hasn't exactly worked out the way people expected. But I want to focus on Van Vliet uh, because he is one of my favorite Raptors of all time. But things have got a little awkward this year. There's been some stories leaked here and there. Things are getting uh, iffy between the franchise and Fred. At his core, uh, Joseph, do you think he wants to leave the franchise before February 9th? If I had to guess, I would say no. I don't think he wants to leave, but I think Fred's, you know, Fred came into the league almost like feeling like a young veteran, very mature, very kind of aware of the business. The guy went undrafted. He wanted to go undrafted once he went, you know, didn't get picked in the first round because he knew how the business went. And so I don't think he wants to leave, but I definitely think he understands the business enough to know, look, I'm a pending unrestricted free agent on a team that is probably going in a different direction based on the way this season is going. They've got a young star in Scotty Barnes they want to build around. And I'm not saying that Fred can't be part of that future, but I think he's smart enough um, and business savvy enough to know that just because he wants to be back and just because the team and the franchise adores him doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to end up being, you know, the right decision long term for a player and team to actually stay together. You know, finally, Cash, I, I go back to the Kyle Lowry trade deadline uh, where everyone thought he was gone. And Masai Ujiri pulled one of the great uh, left turns I've ever seen and was like, I didn't like the offer. Like, I, I think sometimes fans and quite frankly, us in the media, i.e. me, we make the assumption immediately, well, you got to cash in on an asset if they're going to walk, but I can't read Masai at all right now. No, and I don't think many people can, and I think that's part of what makes the Raptors and the trade deadline so fascinating. And, you know, with respect to Fred and, and the Kyle situation, it could end up playing out the same way as like a sign-in trade where Fred ends up getting to a destination he wants and the Raptors recoup some sort of assets, although it would probably be less than it, you know, it would be at the trade deadline. But if you look at Masai Ujiri's track record, even going back to Denver, historically, like, if he doesn't like the offers for a guy, he doesn't feel pressure to trade him. If anything, he'll, you know, re-sign the player, look at it as, like, retaining the asset, and then move them later when the offers get better. You know, I think even a guy like Gary Trent, who I think will get moved, but there's no guarantee. And again, everyone's just assuming, well, he's this expiring contract, probably not part of the plans going forward. I, they have to trade him or else they'll lose him for nothing. And it's like, well, there is another option. They could re-sign him, even if it's a little begrudgingly, and then just flip him later for something else. Masai doesn't box himself in. He rarely does, and I don't think he will this time either. No, uh, but if the offer's good enough, who knows? Uh, February 9th will be an interesting day, ladies and gentlemen, for the Toronto Raptors and the rest of the NBA. Joseph Cacharo from The Score. Follow him online. Cash, appreciate you, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. Take care. And a little we a weather reference in there. I like it from Cash. Good stuff.